Vous venez à savoir vite le dire. Ladies and gentlemen, James Brown. James Brown. It's riding onto the stage like James Brown, it's great. <laughs> it's great, you see, because the difference is in Poland, people know he's a big deal. Like, it's, he's part of, in a good way, he's kind of part of the establishment, despite how, you know. It's, it's not like that in England. I can't think of an equivalent composer that could walk out of Glastonbury and no one would have heard. I mean, it doesn't matter who, who you are. I did a few weeks at college before Radiohead signed a deal and we started touring and in those few weeks I was lucky enough to be shown um, a Penderecki score and played um, and played Polymorphia by a tutor and it was just really exciting I didn't know you were allowed to do that I didn't know you could be that free and you could just think of these 48 musicians as, as being able to do anything and suddenly all these possibilities open up. My relationship to his music is a mixture of stealing and photocopying and listening to it a lot and he's very inspiring to me. I wanted to put something personal into this as a sort of, not a joke exactly, but just a reference for Penderecki's Arboretum and his love of trees. And so I was trying to work out how to get um, something to do with trees into the music. And the only way I could think of was to use a leaf. And you have this, um, this idea where the veins of the leaf become the pitches and the whole orchestra start in unison and they branch off according to where the veins of the leaf are leading you. And again, you've got the pictures for two staves. Um, you know, and it just, it was partly hopefully just to make Penderecki smile when he opened the score. It's music that has enormous scale and combined with a big screen it's it's um it's can be you know can be great, can be overwhelming. You play it to some people and they describe it as music for a horror film. And it's not really like that. Um and and it's hard to explain how in a concert hall this stuff is actually much quieter and, and, and softer and stranger and um, and more complicated than, than you're led to believe, you know, from CDs and from films even. It's, it's a different experience. Ty to rozumiesz na przykład komputer czy coś? Nie. Ja też w ogóle nie wiem nawet co ja. I don't know, I mean the cliche that people say about him is that he did a few interesting things in the 60s and then it all got very traditional and tuneful and but that's not true either. I mean, lots of the, lots of his recent music has still got elements that are very, that are still very strange and dark and, and magical and complicated in a, you know, it's just that thing of clouds of sound that he can produce with an orchestra. And, and that's what, you know, I came away from this first concert. The first thing I saw was um, the viola concerto.
and it was just I like I couldn't believe that all the sounds were coming from the stage I remember thinking there were probably speakers somewhere because you were hearing all these extra harmonics and frequencies and and I I thought it was electronics and and the fact that it wasn't just really you know stuck with me you know he's 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 I was quite starstruck to meet him when I was um, in like 1993. Went to one of his concerts in London, and and met him briefly afterwards. And I just, I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's a very he's very inspiring to me, and you know, it's it's the music I keep coming back to, and. Like I say, I have the strange sensation of constantly wanting to hear his recordings and then thinking that's not how it really sounds. Which makes it even more mysterious in a way, because then you have to go to a concert and it becomes about the event and it becomes about the music just coming from an orchestra, filling the room and then just going going nowhere and that was it. You know, it's not it's not reproducible, I think. So, you know, and we're at a time where everything is, it's all about how things can very easily be spread and reproduced, and this really can't. So, you know, it makes it a very rare and magical thing. Well, the 48 responses that I wrote to Polymorphia are all inspired by, well, the C major chord at the end, and also his influence in the 60s from electronics. I tried to do the same thing, but obviously since then there's been other developments with computers and, and, and sound manipulation. So I tried to steal ideas instead from more modern um, kind of digital manipulations of sound. Um, programs like Max MSP that I use with Radiohead, they have a way of, of treating and manipulating sounds that I tried to then transfer into the orchestra a bit like how he had to with um, you know recreating the sounds of, of white noise and other early electronic sounds in the 60s so yeah that was that was the idea yeah I think there's a strong link because we try and approach using orchestral instruments in a way that isn't, hopefully isn't too traditional and knowing that they can do more than just, you know. Normally when we were told early on by a string group that came to play for us that amongst orchestras they refer to playing on pop records as balloons and that's because usually they turn up and it's just lots and lots of minims because they're playing long, slow, high notes and it's just balloons, it's easy, it's not, it's, it's a session um, and that was a real inspiration for us early on was to not do that and not waste what amazing things classical musicians can do and not treat them like a preset on a synthesizer instead just think of them as, you know, how many musicians who can can do anything really um, and we've been influenced by other arrangers who in turn obviously listen to lots of modern string writing a, a big favorite of ours is Scott Walker and his arranger Wally Stott did lots of very colorful atonal dense string arrangements for Scott Walker and that's very Penderecki I was really excited for my Friends and for Radiohead the band came to um, to to hear this stuff live and to see if there was any truth to all of my endless preaching like I've been doing to you today about about seeking out the the live concerts um, and yeah I think it was I think it was great it was great how young the crowd were how excited they were to see him conducting and 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 hear these sounds. You know, it's great, it's a great day.
I think people are, are always hungry for young people are always hungry for for new sounds and new new colours in their music, and this still sounds new to me. Um, and yeah, I think it's just there's no other way of hearing these sounds. You know, there, there just isn't. Um, and that's a very modern thing, I think. It's funny, we, we went to his house and he was playing this recording of Polymorphia. And um, at one point he said, he pointed at the speakers and said, oh, the, the violins need to be a little louder here, they're not quite loud enough. And, and, it, and it was a bit like, oh, this is going to sound patronising and I really don't mean it to, but it, in a good way, it was like, someone in a band playing you their recording and apologising for something being not quite right with it and it's and it spoke of his kind of enthusiasm for for it and his you know and his desire for it to be you know for you to hear it right and to understand it right and um it wasn't somebody just content with what he'd done and and you know and and instead he was really keen to communicate and encourage and, 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 and help me to understand, you know, this kind of, this whole process of writing music like this. And I tried to sort of show him some um, computer software that I thought he'd be very interested in because it's, um, it's this way where you can see the sound of something represented on the screen and actually draw and stretch and drag things as though as though the ink is wet on a score. You can you can visually um, alter the sound of the music. It's it's wonderful. It's very exciting. Um, so yeah, and this was all in the midst of of a very formal kind of being served tea and cake, and it was it was great. It was it was it was peculiar and wonderful. Yeah, no, of course, I, I, I admire him enormously. Um, and it's funny, I was listening to, I think it's the, the third symphony. And it struck me all this, the, how the melodies work in his music is really interesting as well. It's not how you're, all these falling lines and, and at the same time these, pedal notes running through it that don't change and there's a sort of minimal side to what he does as well as this enormously complicated things which tends to get you know not discussed really um, yeah it's funny I, I just I'm very very happy that this teacher gave me a score and showed me and and you realise that you know, you can just start thinking about music as a series of just, you know, frequencies split up in time and, and this is the range of frequencies you can get each player to use. And and it's it's just a very liberating thing. And you know, and this is the, these are all the best examples of it really. And the fact that they can play three chords in a row in a rehearsal that are all written the same and they sound completely different from one another. So not only do you have the inability to reproduce this stuff from a recording, you can't even do it from, from chord to chord. It's just too, it's too complicated, but not in a way that's, that's unpleasant. It's not that either. It's like, um, they're like, you know, they're like clouds or something. They're like something natural that is just very complicated, but you can take it in. You can still look at an enormous cloud and, and see that it's dramatic and beautiful and and made up of all of these, you know, tiny, tiny constituent parts. And, you know, a lot of this music is like that for me. It's, it's the same thing. I think he started betraying these kind of people when he turned his back on electronics and, and started, you know, that, that was already the first step away from, from that kind of snobbery. And that's, that's a good thing. And I think he did so much wonderful music like this he just didn't continue copying himself. He, no, he just kept moving. 
which is the way to do anything creative, I think. You know, I don't know who, someone said that you should, it's, someone said that the artistic process is, is all about working out how to be yourself and then once you've done that you, you, you do the opposite you know you make sure you're not copying yourself anymore and you um, and that's what he did and then he got he seemed to get inspired by tradition and by and being which isn't necessarily the same as making as writing traditional music it's just placing yourself in I suppose in time which you know which is interesting too But yeah, no, I, I I find it kind of, I find it amusing, the idea of him being accused of something, um, betrayal. It's funny, it's such a powerful, such a strong accusation, you know. But then, you know, I don't know. I think there's two sides to his music. I think it's not just about special effects. I think there's you know, it, there's there's melody and structure and, and everything else going on in his music. You know. Yeah, it's funny. It reminds me of when bands get accused of their early records being more interesting. You know, it's the same. It's kind of, it, it's the same, same curse, really. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> 